Mobile gaming has changed over the years and now there are so many different ways you can play your games on mobile devices. Now this video, we're gonna be checking out the different ways you can actually play and to find out which one fits you best. But before we go ahead, I wanna thank our sponsor of the video, OnePlus, for sending over the OnePlus 11, which we'll be using in this video. And this device has some really great gaming features, which we'll talk about. But let's go ahead and look at each one. Now guys, if you're joining us for the very first time, hit that subscribe button notification icon so you'll be notified with more videos like this. As a gamer, I have used different ways to game over the years, whether it's been stuff like a Game Boy or Nintendo DS, um, to my smartphone. And there's so many ways you can actually get into gaming. Now, all these devices you see right in front of you here allow you to access games on mobile devices. Some of them are different, some of them are smaller or bigger. We have the OnePlus 11, which of course is a smartphone, going over to like the Nintendo Switch. We have the Logitech G Cloud, which is just a game streaming platform, as well as the Razer Edge, which is a mixture of a mobile device and game streaming. And then we have PC-centric gaming devices like the Steam Deck and the Aya Neo 2 and Aya Neo Air Pro, which focus on giving you the best on mobile PC gaming. So let's go ahead and start off with our very first device, which would be the OnePlus 11. Now, why I picked the OnePlus 11 is because of its gaming performance. It is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So on the very base minimum, you're playing Android games, it does really well. Whatever games you play from you know, PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, which has a lot of you know, performance, uh, you know, it's a performance hog as a device. It does a good job there. Also, its temperatures while playing those games are really good. Now, this isn't just about playing Android games. This is about, of course, mobile gaming in total. So you do have access to a lot of features on here. And of course, that means that you can go ahead and game stream on things like Xbox Game Pass, if you have GeForce Now, that kind of stuff. But Xbox Game Pass works really well on this device. And because the device is 5G certified and authorized on all major carriers in the US, you've got connectivity wherever you go to play your games. Now, the biggest benefit with the OnePlus 11 compared to the other devices you're gonna see on here, of course, is its charging. Now, some of the other devices might have bigger batteries uh, in regards to performance, but this device charges from zero to 100 in under 30 minutes. That is very impressive, and I think that adds to that gaming experience. Plus, it's the most portable of all of them, uh, whether you're just using it directly gaming on screen or using a portable controller like the Backbone here, uh, which you can connect it and start playing, of course, your game. So that adds a whole segment to this, and I really like uh, the way this actually places. So if you're looking to just game and start off, your smartphone is the best brand, and also the OnePlus plus 11 really does that job. So let's move to our next device, the Nintendo Switch. Now the Nintendo Switch comes in a few different flavors. You've got the Switch Lite, you've got the regular Nintendo Switch, you've got the Switch OLED. I have the Switch OLED here with me with a lovely OLED display. And what I like about the Switch is that you get that full library of Nintendo games and that's what it's meant for. Battery life for the Switch OLED, you're looking at about five hours roughly, it depends on how much you play and what kind of games you're playing. And you also have access to a lot of third-party games as well, but I'm really here for Nintendo games. And the cool thing is you can actually buy a cartridge, which I don't have one right now, or you can go ahead and go to the Nintendo eStore to actually make your purchases directly from there. So you get the idea with the Switch OLED. Now, the cool thing is, of course, it has a kickstand, which you can actually place down. So depending where you are, you don't have to actually hold it up. You can, of course, separate the Joy-Cons, and you guys know this quite well. And you can play directly from here, which is pretty cool. Or connect it like a proper handheld and start playing. Now, the gaming experience is fun. It's something that, of course, a lot of people like because you're playing a lot of Nintendo games that you want to play. Smash Brothers, Mario, um, Soccer All-Star, Metroid Dread, you can name it. All those kind of games are available on here, and that's why you're getting the Nintendo Switch OLED. 
So game streaming is something that's getting bigger nowadays. And Logitech decided, look, the Logitech G Cloud, this device right here, is a device for you to stream your games. This is purely a game streaming device. Yes, it can play Android games, but the idea is you should be able to connect and stream your games, be Xbox Game Pass, be GeForce Now for PC games. Uh, and also you can jump on Parsec to access your, of course, your PC desktop if you want to. Now the whole experience is actually pretty decent. And for its price, current price point right now, I think it's not a bad offer. You've got a large display and something that will last you battery life for probably roughly around seven hours. Um, and when it comes to streaming games, it works well. Xbox Game Pass play, games play very well on this. And you can see it actually showcases there. Uh, now when it comes to playing Android games, this is where things differ. It is not a powerful chip for playing dedicated Android games, and you're not gonna get the maximum performance there. So that's the downside of this. Plus, you do have, if you have a cell phone, your cell phone can do both. So you're wondering, is this necessary? This might be a second device for say your kid and you want your kid to play say your Xbox Game Pass games and you wanna have just a stationary device and you don't wanna always hand them uh, your, um, your cell phone or your tablet, but this will actually work as a purely game streaming device and it might make sense. So while Logitech has a game streaming device that is strictly Wi-Fi connected and has lower Android gaming performance, Razer has something that's completely different with the Razer Edge. Now the price is a bit more, but Razer partnered with Verizon to give us something truly unique uh, that has a different standpoint to gaming. This is kind of like a portable uh, gaming device that has 5G connectivity, as well as also uh, you know, streaming capabilities. Now, you're wondering, how is this different from my smartphone? This is, the idea here is if you don't wanna use your smartphone like, uh, like the OnePlus 11, or you don't have something as powerful as the OnePlus 11, then this is something you want to get that's strictly for your gaming needs. Now, of course, this means that you can play all your Android games at full uh, performance and get the best capabilities out of those, which is pretty nice, but also means that you can go ahead and connect to game streaming services, be it Steam Link, of course, you've got Parsec, you've got uh, GeForce Now, Xbox Game Pass, uh, and then you can access all those. Now, the cool thing about this is that this is a 6.8 inch device, uh, and it also comes with the Razer Kishi 2 Controller Pro, which, of course, you can take out, and uh, you, you can use this as your portable uh, tablet as well, because it's a large screen, go ahead and watch your streaming services and jump into things like Netflix to watch your shows, or of course, Amazon Prime, whatever you choose to watch, you get the idea here. But you can go back and do your gaming and the performance is really nice. Now, th on the downside, this is an extra device that most people will get and, you know, to do their gaming and this doesn't have uh, proper cellular connectivity. So there are no apps on here for making phone calls or anything like that. So you don't have that benefit of using it purely as a cell phone. You can use it as a smartphone or at least as a smart tablet in all full functionality and enjoy the streaming games as well as those Android games as well, truly on the system. And then we have the Steam Deck. Now Steam Deck is built with PC gamers in mind to make PC gaming more portable which is actually pretty cool. You've got a seven inch display. It is a touch screen display. Uh, you also have opposable thumbsticks all on the top, kind of PlayStation style, but higher. You do have track pads here as well. XYB abundance a D pad. And this is powered by AMD Zen 2 processor uh, with built-in GPU. So you're getting really solid gaming performance from this. Uh, and instead of game streaming like we saw with the Razer, as well as also uh, the Logitech G Cloud, you're, you're gonna play your PC games directly on this. Now, the one thing about Steam Deck is that you get access to all your Steam games. And Steam is probably one of the biggest library for uh, PC games. So if your gaming is on Steam, then you are in luck with the Steam Deck. If you have games through uh, either Xbox Game Pass or Xbox, then you will not be able to access it on the Steam Deck. What I like about the Steam Deck is that this takes you straight to your Steam library. And I've had my Steam library since 1999. I know, quite a while. So which means I have access to all the games that I've purchased on Steam and I can quickly jump into any of those games as I want to. So for instance, I can go into Doom Eternal and uh, go ahead and start playing that quite 
directly from here. And I like that about it. So you've got speakers, this feels comfortable. Now, you've got all the buttons you need for your gameplay experience. You've got, of course, extra remappable buttons at the, at the back here, as well as your trigger buttons on here as well. But the one thing about it is, of course, is battery life. Because this is more of a system hug and it's, use, it's trying to play PC games on a mobile device, you're gonna see that this will run uh, of course, much hotter. And also uh, the battery life is not as long as say your smartphone or some of the game streaming devices in there. Now, uh, performance wise, I really like the Steam Deck. It's done a really fantastic job. The game performance has been great for me all the way through. Um, and I will say the other downside and caveat is that uh, it does get pretty warm in the center, but you don't really notice it as long as you're holding it pretty much on its sides here. So you, you're pretty much good. But the gaming performance is great and its pricing starts at $399 all the way to $649. So this is a more affordable option to something more con you know, serious in terms of uh, PC gaming and more of that you know, uh, PC or console experience, if you will. So that's something to take note. And our last two devices are the AR Neo. This is the Neo Air Pro and this is the Neo 2. Both of these are PC, mo mobile PC gaming devices, just like the Steam Deck, except more powerful in respect and also are running for Windows. Steam Deck runs its own operating system. This runs Windows, which means you can play games on other game services like, you know, Xbox Game Pass, as well as also things like Epic. You can install it on here and install those games. That's one of the biggest benefits. Plus the processing is very different with the the Air Pro here, this is more portable, really light, small, comfortable. This is running a Ryzen 7 processor, uh, and this is a Ryzen 7 U processor in here. So it plays games at 720p. You've got decent performance on there. You really can't go max on there, but you do have a lot of storage. You can go one terabyte here, and it does run warm. While it has a 10,000 milliamp battery, battery life is roughly around two to three hours of gameplay while the, uh, the Neo 2 is a much bigger device running uh, the latest Ryzen processor. Nice display here, you can see Ichigo on screen. This has much better performance where you can play your games at up to 1080p depending on the game you're playing. Really good performance overall. I do like its feel. Storage can go up to two terabytes, which is nice, uh, and you can install a lot of games. And again, you can play your Steam games, you can play your Xbox Game Pass games, whether it's cloud or installed, and you're gonna have a very good gaming performance. So when we look at all the gaming devices here today, there is something for everyone. Now, the best option for most people is your smartphone. And a device like the OnePlus 11 can help you do a lot more than just play Android games, but also play a plethora of games on PC streaming. And it does have that really fast charging. But you have options to pick from like the Nintendo uh, Switch, which allows you to play, of course, all those great Nintendo games. Steam Deck, which is a great capsule for PC gaming, but it's still locked in the Steam ecosystem. And then of course you have things like the the Air Neo series where you, as long as you have the money to spend, you can do whatever you want to. And of course, Razer and Logitech with that game streaming hybrid. Now, let me know what you guys would use as your ultimate or perfect uh, gaming, mobile gaming device. If you have any questions, any comments, let me know. If you wanna pick up any of the devices, including the OnePlus 11, use the links down below. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.